All right, thanks, Sean. Uh, hi, everyone. Thanks for having me here tonight. Um, my name's Chris Miles. I'm a freelance software engineer. I specialize in iOS development, um, and some people even pay me to do Mac development these days. Tonight, I wanted to talk to you about Bluetooth Low Energy and how we can integrate with that using um, Apple's core Bluetooth framework. So I want to start uh, by giving you a demo of Bluetooth LE. Um, I pose this, uh, I guess, this, this problem, theoretical problem. Let's say you're a, you're a coffee addict and you don't get enough just drinking the coffee anymore. You need a little bit more of an experience. You want to monitor your, your coffee drinking intake and the actual coffee drinking experience. So I've got an app for that. I'll just fire that up for you. So, okay, what we've got, okay, so what we've got is an app that um, is talking to my coffee mug and also talking to a heart rate monitor. So what it can do is firstly, if we take the mug, we just give it a sec, if we take the mug, um, what, we, what it expects us to do is to pour our coffee. I don't have any coffee with me tonight, I couldn't get any, but I do have beer. <laughs> so I'm going to substitute beer for coffee. I'll pour my beer in. And the, the specially designed mug has a temperature, temperature sensor built in that will um, tell me the temperature of my mug. So if you, if you had coffee in it, you'd be looking for a good temperature, a good drinking temperature. Um, in terms of putting beer in it, we're waiting for it to go down, so it should maybe slowly head down. <laughs> you can see it slowly drop. It, it takes a little bit. The other thing the, our Coffee Addict um, app can do is to tell us how many drinks or sips we've taken to drink our, our cup. So if we have a drink, Oh, then we wait for a reconnection. It's <laughs> <That's> a prototype <laughs> stage, uh, looking for funding. <laughs> All right, we, let me just reset that. There's one, I'm going to talk about the device I'm using shortly, but it does have a little flaw that I'm, um, that I'm trying to work out with, uh, with Texas, Texas Instruments who make this one. I'll just re power cycle it, get it back online, and we'll see if we can carry on got the, the power cycle in the battery down to a fine art now, <laughs> so I'm quite used to it. All right, so uh, let's, let's pretend that not, none of that happened. You can edit that out. <laughs> so we ta start taking sips. So it's tracking the, obviously it's tracking the mug using accelerometer in real time, and it's, um, the temperature is slowly going down as it's, uh, as it's, as it's detecting the, as the, as the temperature is seeping through the, the sides of the mug. And in terms of tracking our coffee addiction, we can also track our heart rate, which is reasonably high at the moment. I'm uh, pretty excited to be talking to you, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> or I've had too much coffee, one or the other. So that's our little solution that um, should hopefully make us a lot of money. All right. I'll leave that running. I can see, if you see that heart rate go anywhere near 200, just shout out. <laughs> So we've seen it, seen it demonstrated, but what is Bluetooth Low Energy? It's a feature of Bluetooth 4.0. It's designed for low power and low latency wireless applications. So low power, as in any of these devices, should be able to run from the little um, button cell batteries, the CR2032s and that sort of similar thing. And those devices should run, you know, for a, be usable for like a year or more without, before you want to replace the battery. Um, low latency. one. On the other side of the coin, they are designed for low throughput, so they won't, um, you, you probably, I don't think you will do audio through them, for example, um, but you will be able to get sensor data at a decent rate for this, this kind of use. Um, in terms of where they're being used, all over the place, really. Um, here's a bunch that I stole off Wikipedia. Healthcare, fitness, security, home entertainment and home automation, proximity sensing, um, and even some fun little toys that you can get already. And here's some pictures. So we've got things like um, heart rate monitors. Um, I've got one of these Wahoo ones um, on my chest at the moment. I won't lift my shirt up because I'll try and keep it G sort of thing. <laughs> um, there's also, you know, 
uh, running and bike tracking computers and devices and watches and all sorts of things. So there's loads of things out there that all support Bluetooth LE specifically. The good thing from an application developer's point of view is that Bluetooth LE doesn't require any system level pairing. So it doesn't require the user to jump into system preferences, go into the Bluetooth settings and try and pair up their device. The driver as such is built into the app. Um, in terms of, uh, there's a standard protocol for talking to, to dis for discovering and talking to Bluetooth LE devices. So really it's just a matter of putting on the, well, getting the device, say you've got a heart rate monitor, put it on, grab an app that knows how to talk to heart rate monitors, fire it up and it should connect. So it's um, much more user friendly. As such, there's no need for the made for iPhone licensing um, that Apple offers, their MFI program. If you're building a device, uh, you should just be able to grab a, a Bluetooth LE chip or prepaid little um, package and put that into your device. And so independence, ideally independence can really build both the hardware and the software for these solutions. The software is fairly straightforward. I'll show you how to do that um, for Apple's devices shortly. Um, and as I said, for the hardware, plenty of manufacturers like um, Texas Instruments, for example, are making ready, ready to go little Bluetooth LE chips that you can just, or even little boards that you can just um, wire into your own little devices. In terms of Apple's devices that, that support Bluetooth LE, basically everything since around mid last year um, supports it now. So the iPhone 4S and the iPhone 5, I think the 4S was the first to support Bluetooth LE. The iPad 3rd and 4th gen, the iPad mini and the latest iPod touch, um, and every MacBook Pro, MacBook Air and Mac mini since, basically since last year's WWDC, so the retinas onwards. Um, and it's also supported by the iOS simulator if you're running on a Bluetooth LE supported Mac, which is, um, which is pretty cool for development. So Apple provides the core Bluetooth framework, which is specifically um, there for you to talk to Bluetooth LE devices. So I'll just run through, with a bit of code, um, I'll run through how you will use the core Bluetooth to talk or to, to discover and to talk to Bluetooth LE devices. Um, I'll, I'll trim the code down to just the important parts, all the error checking and that has been left out, so um, this isn't production ready code. Um, but basically you would start by adding core, uh, core Bluetooth framework to your app, and then you grab an instance of the CB central manager, which is the, the class where it all starts. Um, you can, you get the manager to scan for any Bluetooth LE devices in the vicinity by calling the central manager scan for peripherals with services, and you specify services by unique identifier. You specify a list of services that you're interested in. So I, I, can, I, I think this, uh, the way I see this is very similar to Bonjour, where you're really trying to discover services um, and you're looking for, for servers on the network as such that are broadcasting that they offer that service. So we make the call to scan, um, we specify the services we're interested in, we can specify nil if we want and we'll get back basically every device in the vicinity. That's not recommended because it um, chews more power but you can do that. If, it's, if our uh, scan was successful, we'll get a call back to the CB, CB central manager delegate. Central manager did discover peripheral, we'll get back a CB peripheral object and we'll get back a dictionary of advertisement data. Um, what this allows us to do is to have a small amount of data about the devices that we've discovered without even connecting to them. So we might get back, <coughs> we might get back the name of the device and the manufacturer. Uh, we might get back the transmit power from that device, which can be useful for proximity applications. And we might even get back a useful value. So one example might be, say, a thermostat on the wall might be broadcasting that it offers the temperature service. And it might also include the current temperature in its advertisement packet. So devices in the vicinity just um, scanning for, for advertisement packets may discover the thermometer and get the current temperature as part of the advertisement data and, and they don't even need to make a connection. They can just um, show that to the user or whatever they need to. So that's, that's a pretty handy um, feature. The last thing you'll get is the RSSI, which is uh, the signal strength indicator in decibels. And that along with the transmit power, if it's been 
offered in the advertisement data gives you a chance to really det to determine roughly how far away you are from the device. So you might want to pick, say, the closest device if there's a number of them, or you might be doing some, some kind of proximity or device finding solution, and that's where you use that. So the next thing we do is we um, grab something out of the advertisement data if we want it. In this case, I'm just going to grab the, uh, the local name, and there's a, there's a standard key for that and then compare it to, say, a device name that I'm interested in. And if I've got the one I want, then I'll stop the scanning process. I'll grab a reference to that peripheral object and set myself as a delegate for any callbacks it might give us. And then I'll attempt to make a connection to the peripheral. So at the moment, we've only discovered that it exists. We're going to try and connect to it. Um, devices that are broadcasting around you, you can basically see them all when they're broadcasting, when they're advertising themselves. Uh, but you can only make, a uh, device can only make a connection to sort of one, one central as they're called, say that one iPhone at a time. So if that heart rate monitor or that thermometer or whatever or that coffee addict mug is connected to an iPhone, then um, that iPhone's got hold of it and you won't, see it, uh, you won't see it advertising. So we'll attempt to make a connection and if that's successful we'll get a call back, central manager did connect peripheral and we will then want to discover what services it's offering and make sure they're the ones that we want. So we'll make a call to um, discover services giving a array of UUIDs that we're interested in. Um, one thing to note um, that with core Bluetooth, or with, sorry, with Bluetooth LE, devices, services, and all the other uh, things you'll see, they're all designated by unique identifiers. So here we've got, um, we're specifying this sort of magic string 180D, which is a, the hex UID for the a heart rate service. Um, that's a short UID that's been um, allocated by the Bluetooth Special Interest Group. So for some common use cases, they've allocated a bunch of U UIDs. So that means really any, blue say, any heart rate um, device that you grab off the shelf that supports Bluetooth LE should be advertising with that service ID, which means your app or any apps you grab should be able to talk to any of the, of the um, heart rate monitors, which is, which is pretty handy. They're not all manufacturer specific. Um, if you make up your own service or your own device, then you can pick one of the, the longer, you know, 128-bit UUIDs um, and, and go with that. And that happens quite a bit. So we try and discover the services that uh, this peripheral is offering. And if that call is successful, we'll get back uh, did discover services for that peripheral. And then we can iterate through those. And what we want to discover next are the characteristics of each, uh, of each service. So... Characteristics are like the, the properties or the variables of a service. So something like a heart rate monitor may have a characteristic for enabling and disabling that service. It may have another characteristic for the actual heart rate value, the current value that it has. Um, and heart rate monitors also, well, they seem to also have um, a characteristic for the location on the, on the body of, of that device. So the one I'm wearing would return chest or something like that, for example. So to go through the sort of protocol, we. We, we discover the characteristics to make sure the one we're interested in is actually part of that service for that peripheral. And we'll get a, if that's successful, we'll get a callback to did discover characteristics for service. And then we can dive in and make sure we're looking at the service we are actually interested in. So heart rate in this example, um, iterate through the characteristics and look for the characteristic that we're interested in. Um, there's two we're interested in for this example. The first one is the characteristic for enabling or disabling that service. So if we find that, we want to make sure that the service is enabled. That might already be, but we'll just make sure. So we'll set up um, a data packet to send over because we're going to write, um, basically write a value which enables the heart rate service. With, uh, with Bluetooth LE, all the data is raw, sort of basically raw data. They're, no, they're not really typed as such. So you create NS data packets um, and you, you, you would look up what, um, how to pack your data for, the, for that particular service, for that device. So here we just need to send um, a one as a, as a byte um, and we use the CB peripheral objects method write value for characteristic and we specify the type that we want to write that um, and we're interested in a, re in a, re interested in a response. Um, the other characteristic that we're interested in is the actual heart rate values themselves. And if we find that characteristic, what we're going to ask the device to do is to start sending us notifications for whenever that value changes. So what we could do is just read the value and be done with it. Maybe if it was a temperature thing, we might just read it and, and say, okay, we've got it, there you go. 
um, we don't need updates. But in this case, we'd like to get continuous updates. So um, Bluetooth LE supports this notification type request where we ask the device, send me notifications for updates to this value or for this characteristic um, and, and just keep them coming. So here we um, request the set notify value. We, we enable it by saying yes and for a particular characteristic. If all that's worked, then finally we get to the actual meat of the of the code, which is well, we should get periodic callbacks to peripheral did update value for characteristic, and we'll then jump in, find the characteristic of the value we're interested in, and we'll unpack the data. We'll, it'll give it to us in an NS data object again. Um, looks like heart rate values can be eight or sixteen bits, so we we go through the dance to unpack that, and then we finally have our value, and we can send that to the screen. So it's kind of a, a reasonable bit of, bit of code when you're actually standing it talking through it, but most of it's boilerplate, so you'd abstract all that out into a class and all that, um, and then really you'd, you'd have a minimal amount to, to get up and running. Most of it's shared across sort of any type of device, any type of service. Just to get a, perhaps a better overview of the terminology that we were looking at for, for all that, um, starting at the top, we've got the, the peripheral ad advertising along with the central scanning. So the, the, what Bluetooth, the, the terminology that Bluetooth LE uses is that, so devices like a heart rate monitor that are, of, that are advertising a service are called peripherals, and devices that are going to connect to them are called centrals for, for some reason. So the centrals will scan for devices um, offering services in the vicinity, and these perif peripherals will advertise. In the core Bluetooth stack, we use a CB central manager class for that. So next we'll, we'll be looking for a particular or a peripheral offering a service. So the heart rate monitor is, is such a peripheral and that's um, abstracted by the CB peripheral class. A peripheral will offer one or more services. So in this case, um, this heart rate monitor only offers the heart rate service, but other, um, other devices may offer many services for many different types of data. CB service is the class for that one. And each service will offer multiple characteristics, so multiple properties really that you can read, write, or be notified about. So the heart rate service offers the, the beats per minute value along with the location string for where that device is expected to be located on the, on the person. So the CB characteristic. And then all the values come back as NS data objects that you'll unpack um, and you'll pull out. You'll look at the device documentation or the profile that Bluetooth um, group advertises and you'll, you'll know that it's supposed to be an int or a string or, or whatever. So in new in iOS 6, um, Apple added to core Bluetooth that iOS devices can be peripherals, which is quite handy for development and, and perhaps other use cases. So you can set up your app to um, pretend to be maybe a, a, a virtual heart rate monitor. So just if you're, if you're developing that solution and don't have one handy, or maybe you'll use the accelerometer data of the, of the phone itself. And if you don't have the device that I've got here, you might use your phone and, with an app running that's, that's advertising that service. Um, and these would be the classes you look at, CB Peripheral Manager, CB Central, CB Mutable, mutable Service, and CB Mutable Characteristic. So that's a, that's a pretty cool feature. Um, Macs can't be peripherals from what I understand, um, but the iOS devices can. Um, and something else that I found interesting was that they have some special background modes for core Bluetooth apps. So there's two types of background modes for iOS. There's event-based peripherals, which means that basically um, the way I understand it is you tell the core Bluetooth, tell core Bluetooth that you're interested in, you're looking for a, a device, or you're looking for a service, or you're looking for a service to give you a value, and just tell me when it's ready, and then the app can just go to sleep. It can be suspended in the normal way. And the Bluetooth um, chipset will actually monitor that for you. So the core Bluetooth registers with the Bluetooth chipset looking for that particular service of a device perhaps. Once it gets back the, the value, then the core Bluetooth stack wakes up the application and then you can do something with it. So that's pretty cool. Um, the other option that they offer is called session-based peripherals. And basically that's just another one of those um, special use, special cases for allowing your app to run in the background continuously where you, where you register with an info P list setting and then your app gets full access to the blue, core Bluetooth stack in the background and, and can just keep going. So that's one of the, another one of those special background cases. It does mean though you can implement some pretty funky things that are continually looking for Bluetooth devices and doing things with them. Um, in terms of uh, places to look for more information, the WWDC 
from last year, the two sessions, 703 and 705, um, go into a lot of detail, they're worth watching. Um, 705 covers using your iPhone as a peripheral and have a good, they have a good demo. Um, and there's a, there's a PDF at uh, de developer apple.com slash hardware drivers. You'll find it in that list of documentation they've got in that section. <coughs> Uh, the last thing I just wanted to talk about was the device I used to do my um, uh, money-making coffee thingy device. Um, it's called a sensor tag that's made by Texas Instruments, and it's basically just a little device for Bluetooth development. Um, it has six sensors built into a tiny little, tiny little circuit board. If I pull that off, there's just the little board here that's in a nice little plastic packaging, and that's all there really is to it. They even give you a, a nice sort of rubber surround to put around it, which is, uh, which is pretty nice of them. Um, so as you can see, in, built into it, it's got a three-axis accelerometer, a three-axis gyroscope, a three-axis magnetometer, a infrared temperature sensor that can also do ambient temperature, and a barometric <coughs> pressure and humidity um, sensors. And I'm just going to reset this device again because it's... It's frozen up. So it's, it's, it's a pretty cool little device if you're interested in playing around with any uh, Bluetooth LE. One problem like the, the power reset I've been doing, um, I'm not sure why that happens though. I think the TI guys reckon it's something to do with IRS. They blaming sort of iOS, um, but we're all shrug shrugging at them saying, well, look, you have to fix it. Um, so we're, I'm talking to them in their forums. But what they do offer is a pretty cool um, iOS app. So what I'm going to do is just give you a look at that um, and show you the other sensors it's got before I wrap up. So let's just let me switch out to that. Sorry? I'll tell you that in a minute. I'm not going to give away everything at once. Right, so I'll bring up the, um, the little TI sensor tag app that they offer. And we're finding a few devices. <laughs> More than I found at home, I'll tell you. So one that we found is the um, heart rate monitor that I'm wearing. If we jump into that, we can actually see that it knows about the heart rate profile. So it can give us, you know, it's still reasonably high, so I'm still having fun up here. <laughs> but it gives you some information in the detail. It's probably hard to read, but manufacturer name and, and some firmware revision numbers and things like that. So it's good for... Um, introspecting the devices you've got handy. We'll disconnect that. Uh, just give me a sec. I'll let it find it. There we go. So we've got the device. Okay. So the app lets you um, explore all the services that the little the little circuit board offers. Um, something that it, that I didn't mention is it has two buttons in case you're developing an app that needs buttons. So you've got you know, these two little Bluetooth buttons, which could be useful. Um, but the more interesting ones, so you've got the accelerometer, um, like you saw with my mug demo, and you've got the magnetometer that you can calibrate if you want to reset which way is north and, and all that sort of thing. Uh, you've got the gyroscope for rotational acceleration type uses, and you've got the temperature, temperature sensors. So the IR one, it's got a little IR um, sensor on that, so if I stick my finger over it, we should see that go up a bit. Reasonably cold, must be um, from holding the beer. And the ambient's pretty comfortable, so thanks, Sean. <laughs> Barometric sensor and the humidity sensor. If we calibrate the barometer, then we basically reset the altitude. So if we were doing any altitude applications, we can, um, we can use a barometer for, for that sort of thing. Um, something else it does is it graphs all the data it gets, so that can be handy. It's pretty cool, all built into the, the free app they offer. And finally, what you've got is a way to turn on and off all the sensors and to do a little bit of configuration. So all the sensors, some of them you might not need, so you switch them off to save battery. Um, or some of them you might ramp up the um, notification rate. So if we do that and jump back to the accelerometer, we've got a much faster update rate, which is, which is what I ramped up with for my little solution there for the demo. The last thing it's got which is kind of cool, is you can basically ask it to generate source code for the way you've configured that device. Um, and, you can, and it gives you this um, Objective-C code using core Bluetooth. So you're, in theory, ready to go, which is pretty nifty. It's generous of them, although one problem is it doesn't actually work. 
The, um, <laughs> if you look at, say, the main program, it's not even valid Objective C. There's no implementation. There's no interface line. They don't define the properties that they use. Uh, but I've I've been hassled, I've hassled them on the forum about that as well. But they do give you it does give you enough information that you can kind of work around and get started. So that was useful. It's a it's a good attempt anyway. So um, yeah, that device is pretty cool. Now, how much and where can you get one? So it's made by Texas Instruments, and they sell it for a whopping twenty five dollars. So if you're interested in um, in Bluetooth LE, it's it's an easy buy and it's a fun little device to play around with. Um, TI.com slash sensor tag is their short URL to jump into it, or just Google TI sensor tag. And that app that I showed is just available in the App Store. Um, and, and that's all, so thanks, guys. See you.